Oh, I'm energized. With Randy Rosarena landing in Seattle this Saturday, who should the Dodgers go after? Look out, Chicago. LA's coming to clean house. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Touching Bases Podcast. God, you are you are beautiful. Subscribe and join the family. This channel is only seven months old, and I appreciate every single one of you who have joined me on this journey just going over baseball content. Like the video at the end if I deserve it. If I don't, give a comment below on what facts I missed or any sort of viewpoint you don't agree with. Let's have a casual, calm conversation and discuss baseball. Let's just talk ball. Anywho, I've drank way too much coffee. The Dodgers missed out on Randy Arena as he is headed to Seattle. Now let's cut to the chase, the perfect blockbuster deal that the Dodgers need with Mookie Betts and Miguel Rojas, Chris Taylor, and Max Muncy out offensively. Yamamoto, Bueller, Gonsolin, and May injured, depleting the bullpen and the rotation. The bottom of the order batting 202 and 204, and James Outman basically a complete disaster this season as he came off a really good one in 2023. Well, hello White Sox. The Dodgers have the depth in their prospect rankings to trade for Luis Robert Jr. to replace Jason Hayward, who's slashing 202, 300, and 324 since coming back from the IL. They also can supply the talent to go get Garrett Crochet. This is perfect timing, given that the trade piece I'd offer just made his debut and pitched a five and a third inning with four hits, three walks, two strikeouts, giving up no runs at all. A quality first start, performing better than Clayton Kershaw did in his first game back. Who is this? Dodgers fans know. Everybody else? It's River Ryan. Weird name. The man himself in fan graphs is the Dodgers' number one prospect. Now, let me be clear. This most likely needs to be a five for two trade. Some of you may be raising eyebrows. Only five? And some of you might also be raising eyebrows saying, we have to give up five? I don't blame you, but understand the trade climate. With only five days left and the Mariners trading only three prospects, one one of them not even mentioned for a Rose Arena, and none of them are even in the top 10 of their system. I know for a fact that the offers to get in Southside Chicago are going to be way lighter in weight. He will still want more, and the Dodgers can give more, so here's what I propose. Luis Robert Jr., Garrett Crochet, four. Miguel Rojas, River Ryan, Josue De Paula, Nick Frazzo, and Landon Knack. Now we start off at number one. With no prospects in the White Sox organization and Brooks Baldwin slashing a .095, 174 and .095, Nicky Lopez, who isn't really batting much better at 239, can slide over to second and Miguel Rojas can take over at shortstop for a year and a half when he gets back from the IL. Number two, as I mentioned, River came out hot and and is one, if not the top prospects in the Dodgers organization. Don't get mad at me, I'm going off of Fangraph's pipeline rankings, whatever. Either way, top 10 starting pitcher going to Chicago, that is MLB ready. Number three, Josue is a single A outfielder who is 18 years old, ranked number eight in the LA Dodgers system. The White Sox don't have a single prospect in the organization that is an outfielder ahead of Dominic Fletcher, who is at the MLB level already, and he's number 15. This is a huge piece to the Chicago pipeline and a minor dent to the LA's. Frazzo, who's also near MLB ready, a 25-year-old top 10 organization prospect, starting pitcher with only a 3.26 ERA. He has a 69% left on base percentage and hasn't given up a single home run all season. Last but not least, and this... I. I know, I know. Landon Knack, he has proven himself for the MLB table, especially in Chicago. This is the kicker to the deal for them to really kind of pull the trigger as pitching is wanted everywhere, probably for the next two or three seasons. And Chicago will be in a really good place for bats come mid-2025 when other teams are searching for good arms. Th this is hypothetical, but if we look to the rotation for Chicago the rest of this season, Chris Flexen, Drew Thorpe, Landon Knack, Eric Fetty, and River Ryan. 
pretty damn good rotation for Chi Town, if you're asking me. Especially considering what they had before losing Dylan Cease. On top of that, they're getting a, some bats to fill in on their infield. They already have Gavin Sheets who can fill in a slot in the outfield. He's not the greatest, but this is a move to really get some top prospects that will later benefit you. Let's also consider this. In a recent report, this is coming from someone claiming that ESPN said this. I try to verify. It's it's coming from multiple people. Roche claimed that if he's traded, that he won't pitch in the playoffs without an extension. <sighs> That's a bit bold. This cuts about 80% of the teams and the Dodgers bankroll is endless. So they become probably the most prominent buyers. If Getz can bundle Robert in a trade package, he wins. Otherwise, he will be stuck with Crochet unless they plan for a long-term contract after just a single season of dominance and really no other signs of longevity. It's almost like Crochet has realized that he might not be able to replicate this, so he needs to secure a contract now. This to me though, gives the Dodgers what they need for this season to handle the Phillies and the Orioles in the postseason. I think this makes them dominant enough to really take it all the way to the World Series and potentially win it, especially with all the money they've already spent and dealing with their injuries so recap outfield tell me it's not the best one robert jr in center field teoscar hernandez in left and the surprisingly talented andy pajes taking right field sounds good to me looking in the future mookie betts comes back to play shortstop and nick ahmed who came to la from the giants made a pretty big splash playing his former team and he can move over to third base to replace the struggling hernandez this is a monster outfield and pretty solid lineup You've already upgraded your two spots that are kind of struggling and you're adding a huge bat that replaces Jason Hayward. But what do you think? Comment below what your thoughts are. If this is a good deal or not, it should plug most holes for the White Sox as they rebuild and kind of push the Dodgers to the top offensively without costing them much really for the next five years. Other than that, subscribe, like the video, and I will see you beautiful, beautiful people on the next one. Later. Later.